Hey everyone, that's STEM Guy here. No matter where your classroom is located at around the world, I hope you are having a great day. Today, I am back with another STEM challenge, what I wish I knew video. This time, we're gonna be focusing in on some tips for the Lego challenge. So this challenge is more of a team building and communication challenge than it actually is a STEM challenge. This is something that's great to use at the beginning of your school year to help build cohesion in your classroom community or your lab groups. It's also something if you're in the corporate setting that you can pull out at a retreat and use as an icebreaker. Anybody can do this challenge from kindergartners all the way to adults. They'll be engaged and they'll have fun because who doesn't like building with Legos? So this challenge is like an intricate game of telephone. And instead of passing a message, you're passing what a Lego build looks like through a chain of people. In each group, there are three rules. And depending on kind of where you find the information about this challenge, the rules may have different titles. I made sure that each role had a different letter that it started with to help ease confusion among my students. The first role I call the designer. The designer is the person with the idea and they're the only member of the group that actually gets to see the Lego model. It's their job to study the model and use verbal communication to describe it to their group so that their group can build the model accurately within a time limit. The next job I call the project manager. The project manager's job was to take the information and listen to the information from the designer and take it back to the builders and relay it so the builders can start building. If the builders have any questions, they were to ask the question to the project manager who would then take the question back to the designer and try to clear up any misconceptions that the builders have. Now, the project manager role from third grade and above, they were not allowed to touch the Lego bricks. They had to simply rely on verbal communication. My K-1-2 students, I allow the project managers to bring the brick up to the designer and say, hey, is this what we need? Uh, because it, it just, younger students haven't developed that descriptive language vocabulary yet. So it was a little bit more challenging for them, but allowing them to bring the brick up was something that really made the challenge run a little bit smoother for my younger students. The last job within a group is the builder and it's the easiest job. They are simply just listening to directions of the project manager and building. And if they have questions, they ask the project manager and wait for the answer to come back to them. So it's a pretty straightforward job. They just have to make sure that the model is built within the time limit before time expires. So there you have it. That's our overview of the Lego challenge. Now I'm gonna offer some tips on how to make this challenge run super smooth in your classroom. Tip number one. Keep the builds simple. No more than 10 Lego bricks. Make sure that your builds are simple and easy. You can do a lot with seven to 10 Lego bricks. The four builds that I chose are gonna be up on the screen now, and I chose for the students to make a Lego duck, to make a little playground toy, to make a turtle, and to make a campfire scene. Everything used, I think, less than 12 Lego bricks. The most was the campfire. Um, and it just, it, it, it allows, for wins, right? We want to give our students some wins. Uh, we don't want them to be frustrated in the activity. So keeping the build simple and easy makes it so that some groups actually do get to build the model accurately. My next tip is to make sure that your designers and builders are in totally different places. You do not want any direct communication between those two roles within each group. Find a space for your designers so that they can't see the model being built and say, no, 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 not that. Or also on the flip side, builders can't hold up a piece and be like, is this what we need? You don't want that. So find a space in your classroom or wherever you're running this challenge to make sure that designers and builders are separate from each other. And tip number three, this is the most important tip that I'm going to give you for running this challenge smoothly. Assign roles yourself. Do not let the students, the employees pick their own roles. People are gonna fight over who does what. I assigned each student a number. My groups were groups of three to four and each student had a number. And I would, as we rotated through, say one's your designers, two's project managers, threes or threes and fours, your builders, depending on how large the groups were. And some of those larger groups were four students. There was times when there were two project managers or two designers. And they had to work to try to figure out, well, how do we make this work? 
How can we make it work where two people are communicating and, and holding this information? It was interesting to see the strategies they came up with when they had two students running that role. Two builders is pretty simple and pretty straightforward. But by having a rotation and assigning the jobs already and knowing what your rotation is gonna be so that each student gets an opportunity to do each job is really, really, really effective for making this challenge fun and getting the most out of it. So there you have it. There are my tips for the Lego challenge. Some things I did to make this challenge more fun is make sure at the end, you know, just go around and show the model that you were building to each group. It's kind of funny to see their reactions, um, you know, jaws dropping, staring at the designer like, what? That's what we were building. So it's kind of silly to see the kids' reactions when they actually get to see what they were supposed to build. And also make sure that you offer some time to reflect. I loved asking my students what job they thought was easiest, what job they thought was hardest, and what job they thought was most fun. It was really interesting to get those answers and see what they thought was the most challenging aspect of the process of designing the Lego model. So if you like this video, please go ahead and subscribe to my channel or like this video for me. I'm trying to grow this channel. I'm trying to get out some content, tell you all these tips to run these lessons and challenges more smoothly in your classroom. I'm trying to get some product reviews out so you know what to buy and what to avoid for your lab. Because let's be honest, money and education is tight. We don't want to be wasting on something that's not great. And finally, I'm chronicling my journey through piloting my program and I'd love for you to follow along with me. So I hope you have a great day. Until next time, I will see you later.